Muncie. We've added Muncie vendors are uh, director of information technology and IT, as it's commonly known. Requirements, 
critical public safety services such as 911 cab, enterprise systems such as the finance server, tax server, or GIS. Upgrades and design changes were made to increase the performance of this capacity and network connectivity in the SAM to accommodate them. Capacity and performance of the existing SAM is unable to keep up with the current need. Man on the system is resulting in regular disk latency errors, indicating that the storage is unable to keep up with requests from the host and virtual server clients. Frequently, applications are failing or freezing due to disk latency. An example applications that have experienced increased interruptions in the past year are the number one cap and the financials. The current solution uh, is, is barely getting us by. Last year, I strongly encouraged the replacement of it, and we'd be lucky if we can do it here. But we are spending more and more time putting out fires with it, keeping it running. Uh, last year, there was a little discussion about the cloud. Um, my position on the cloud is firm at this point. Um, at the current state of technology, reliability, security, and performance of cloud based storage makes it unsuitable for the majority of our production data. The technology has just reached the mainstream and just as quickly reached the mainstream news. It's not mature and it's not secure. There are some storage dependencies for other projects that are on the front page. All of the access control, security, surveillance, telephony, summary proposals that have been provided require additional SAM and NAS storage capacity and performance. So all of these all these other technologies tying in and integrate and use that SAN storage. The service dependencies are that all of the access control, security, surveillance, telephony summary proposals that have been provided include components that require additional physical server for host. Andy Rippey, so it's safe to say that um, this is kind of, it would be foolish to to replace your access control or your telephone system without first replacing your SAN? Absolutely. So well, you're saying that the SAN is your top power? I'm saying that the SAN is a dependency for our ongoing operations regardless of the these processes right now. If we don't replace access control system and surveillance system, if we don't pursue an alternative telephone solution, that SAN is still a priority just for ongoing operations. What you're saying is you replace your telephone system, but you leave the SAN you have. That's like sending the kid to school to finish you with no lunch money. Well, that's right. We can't. We cannot do it. Uh, and, I, and I have additional information on the proposals and solutions. Should we need to discuss those? But basically, each one of those solutions, all these are computer programs that run the security system. Your telephone system is a computer and computer program. And in modern systems, they integrate a lot of those functionalities, like the voicemail, as a virtual server that runs in our current version of the When do you have your time admitting that for the deal? I think that the, uh, the, the preliminary information that we've had to provide has really taxed our department just, just to start these communications back a month or two ago. Um, you know, and this was sort of a trial run to find out the types of information that the vendors need to be able to propose some of these solutions because they want to know what kind of cards are in play, what kind of controllers are in play, how many numbers are there, how many sites are there, what type of services go to those sites. Um, and I think that through that trial run, um, we realized that, that there is um, the potential, once we get the SAN solution in place, to immediately pursue replacement of those solutions, provided that we can get the budget funding there. Um, one of the goals um, that this is... Are you going to use a bid process or are you going to use a request for proposal well, under that limited exception for computer technology? So there's, it's likely going to be a combination of IT RFPs. Uh, there are a few of the um, prospective vendors that do have state contracts and they also have other contracts that will allow you to outright purchase the system. Uh, but I think based on the variances that we saw in the pricing, that it would move us to go through an RFP process either way. Um, there, there are some, if you would say, steps we may need to get ready to talk about the process. There's two steps for us. Absolutely. Uh, our access control system, uh, 
is, is actually out, outside of its lifespan already. Uh, the control system relies on two or three different major components that are integrated. Linnell, Bosch, and Ready to Pro. And uh, here at the top, you see on page six, Bosch has ended support for the Ready Key Pro product line and its bar relationship between Bosch and Linnell International ended one year ago, January 17, 2014. Aside from the badges, the card readers, and the door latches, all other hardware and software must be replaced. Um, and so underneath that, um, you know, the solution is basically 15 years old, and um, there are a number of other bullet points that indicate that really our only pathway moving forward is to replace that system. The access control and security products integrated with one another and with the fire systems. The replacement solution must be integrated with the current fire I.O. to avoid a system redesign or replacement cost. So your fire systems, the integrity of that system cannot be changed. The design of that system cannot be changed without replacing it. We do have two proposals um, that vendors have put forth that would be able to leave that fire system intact that would integrate this new security solution. Could you, could you talk to the board that the, the Bosch has went out of business? They are no more. Well, no, actually, they're still in business, but the, the software provider um, and the hardware provider are no longer the ones that are not working together anymore. They, they parted ways. And so um, the software that we currently have and the replacement components for our system are no longer available. Uh, those get the replacement cards would be in these products. So, in other words, if something breaks in our system, we cannot, we can no longer find a replacement part. We have to put a new system. Depending on which part it is. But right now, there are some, some critical parts uh, that have been problematic, and we suspect that the probability of them failing this year is pretty high. We're just keeping real close tabs on it, trying to keep the back up to the system. And uh, we do have some resources for some spare parts, but uh, that's providing that those aren't the key elements of the system that require interaction with the system. How old is that system? It's 15 years old. The surveillance system is probably the least significant, but, but I did want to focus a little bit on it because it does integrate with the proposed solutions for access control and security that um, the vendors have put forth. And our surveillance system needs to be updated and modernized to essential management. Right now we've got um, five or six separate surveillance systems and software to begin with. So if an event happens and an export has to be made and the data needs to be put off on a CD, then that means my staff have to keep track and understand how to run five different software products to do that. Um, a vendor has put forth a proposal that will centralize data from the, existence, the existing surveillance system into a virtual appliance that will allow us to go to one pane of glass to retrieve those videos or collect that data should we need to. The other, the other problem with the DVRs that have been deployed are that they rely on individual hard drives inside. And so just like a computer, instead of being stored or backed up onto the sand, those drives fail. Uh, last year, I think we had two DVRs fail at the jail. And you know, depending on when they fail, you might have a, a situation where somebody says, well, we need the surveillance video for a case, and the data is not available. We want to get out of that position where we've always got that security to know that the data is being backed up onto the sand. The current surveillance system needs to be both centralized and decentralized. So for the example of the jail, we need um, the folks at the jail to be able to directly access those videos when needed, but we also need to be able to pull that data in and back it up onto the sand. Um, the same for uh, the ICOP system where they bring in video from out the field. Those data sets mm -hmm. also need to be backed up onto the sand. And we've had instances where they've had a cartridge fail or a hard drive fail, and the data wasn't available for a case. Any questions about the surveillance system? Can you think of the DVR fails? Is there a signal, or do you just have to catch it? Well, we, we don't receive any notification, any direct notification if the signal is lost. Usually, you don't know it until you go in and retrieve the video and find out the video for that camera isn't there, is it there or that, that if you log into it, that there's just an error report on the screen. Um, I think one time we did have to send a DVR off and try to have uh, data recovery services done on it. That could be very costly as well. So, um, almost all of, all of the DVRs that we have currently 
have the ability right in the menu of that DVR to write data to a SAM. It says it right in those words, to say data to the SAM. And so that's something we haven't been able to leverage because we don't have free space on SAM to do that. So we'll rely on the hard drives that are in those DVRs. Moving forward, by moving to an IP-based camera system and um, a centralized surveillance platform of the virtual environment, the DVRs that we'll, we'll be able to purchase will have to have, will not require as much physical capacity as the DVR because it's relying on the same for a location to run. Any other questions? Our telephone system, AJ. The existing telephone system has become unreliable. The system, vendor, and service contract are not providing the level of service needed for our organization. Our telephone system is 17 years old, and um, we've, we've had several incidents this year that have severely impacted um, our ability to have voicemails or have reliable communications with our clients. We also had problems getting quotations on upgrades to the system and inconsistencies in those quotations. And there are some other persistent issues that still remain with drop calls, lost dial time, inbound callers receiving dead air, fast busy, or recording unexpectedly. We've been aware of the issue and have been receiving cards in the phone switch over two dozen times this year we've had to go down and receive cards in the phone switch. That's a problem. We've opened tickets with the vendor and they've made multiple attempts to resolve the issue um, and it hasn't been resolved yet. The impact of end users during each event um, has negatively affected productivity and throughput for the organization. Um, we've got 107 trouble tickets that came in during the voicemail event alone um, that came into our department to resolve issues with access to voicemail or um, resetting passwords to voicemail and access to the system. The current phone platform is not keeping pace with innovations of competitors. Um, and it's becoming more costly to maintain license and engineer solutions for it. And here's alternative resellers for our current phone system are in Knoxville and Atlanta, and we have reached out to them for proposals as well. Um, <coughs> numerous nearby companies that have the same phone system have um, replaced it with more violence. Those are the basics. Read the rest of the report there. Any questions? Uh, just do <coughs> Is the problem that we're experiencing with the phone system in your opinion, is it a problem to do with the phone system or is it a problem to do with the vendor, the service? Well, the primary, the primary issue that's affecting us most is probably due to the vendor. Um, and, and the vendor's ability to respond to the issue, they've had some staff turnover. Um, and the level of the documentation that they have produced while deploying the phone system has not been sufficient. So they're basically facing a learning curve with new staff coming in supporting the system. But there are some there are some issues with the system um, that probably would be resolved by replacement the system as well. There's some aging issues. And uh, basically you're looking at the legacy technology that's being brought forward in modern technology, but it still has its legacy foundation. And I think uh, several solutions that we have looked at consider uh, basically taking the approach to operate more virtual level so that we have less points of failure. Right now, uh, with our current system design, the voicemail solution that we've got in place relies on a single server. It has no backups on it. It has no um, no alternative solution. So if that server fails, we'll be without voicemail again for another month. Um, all of the solutions that we've had before basically address that issue by making sure that there's, there's duplicate or redundant services in place. For our system, as it stands to be redefined and add that level of functionality, uh, it would be cost I know it would be cost -free. I got one more page here at the end. Replacement of these problematic systems will significantly free up IT administrative time in the long haul. In the 
short term, demand for IT is expected to increase as projects and proposals are reviewed for solutions and deployed. It's very important that in preparation of RFPs to replace critical infrastructure, making county commit sufficient resources and expertise to the process. The request, selection, deployment, and maintenance require careful consideration. The RFPs must contain accurate details of highly complex systems and their integration in our expected results. Vendors must commit to maintaining appropriately trained and certified staff in order to carry out and sustain a solution. Vendors must commit to fully documenting their solutions as they're deployed and their changes moving forward with a full inventory of the hardware, software, and system components. Vendors must share the documentation with Macon County staff effectively to select, support, and maintain the systems internally. Macon County must commit to maintaining the systems in a supportable hardware and software revision. So if we fall in the rears on our software revisions, then that means that additional costs come to us whenever we try to catch up and resolve the problem. With all due respect to our leadership and management, I strongly and finally encourage you to consider additional information technology staff. The value of any enterprise information system will not be realized unless IT staff have sufficient time to be involved in the deployment, participate in the systems operation training, and pursue the certifications to support the system. Good folks, you got me on this. Eight. One of GIS. Eight, and one of them is GIS. Mapping. 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 Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Good job, Andy. Our IT staff, just like another department, said they did a great job. I asked Andy, I said, Andy, what would you say to the mission statement of your department? He said, Fair enough. 